the making of a son of perdition was an apostle. The making of an apostate is a professing Christian. It's an alarming thing, is it not? You say, well, how does he do it, Brother Curran? I'll give you this shortly. First of all, there will come a day in your life, even though you're a sincere professor in Jesus Christ, there will come a day in your life if you neglect the ways of God, if you spurn the means of grace, that Brother Paul addressed in the previous hour of secret prayer and the reading and appropriation of God's Word, there will come a day where increasingly you become conformed to this world and you'll no longer be convicted about your sin. No longer will God cease to annoy you about your sin. You see the reality of that. In Ephesians chapter 4, it speaks of those who are past feeling. Secondly, you're no longer restrained in your sin. You'll look at things, you'll speak of things in a despicable way before God. Those things, they don't bother you. When you sin against God, you're not convicted. You sin more and more without any restraining influence of the Holy Spirit. Much like Saul. The Scripture says in 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 12, when Samuel comes and says, what have you done in offering this offering before the Lord? Saul said, I saw that you came not within the days appointed, therefore I forced myself to offer this offering. Friend, from that day forward, you never find where Saul forced himself to disobey God again. Then thirdly, listen to this. The third step in the process is God will let you sin and let you think you're getting away with it. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11, Because sentence against the evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. And then finally, the final stage. Listen. Is God will lead you into more temptation. What? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 13, the model prayer. Jesus says, Father, lead us not into temptation. The phrase presupposes that it's possible for God to lead into temptation. You say, how is that? I didn't say God causes you to sin. I didn't say that God tempts you. But God does not tempt according to James chapter 1. But I'm telling you, friend, He will so back off of your life, it's like the temptation of sin is given to you consistently on a silver platter. It's for the purpose of hardening your heart more and more. It's the wrath of abandonment. I have been in conferences like this for a number of years. And people come with such hunger, seemingly such an insatiable appetite for truth and to obey God. But can I tell you that sadly, In a venue such as this, potentially you may be sitting beside one of the greatest apostates that the world has ever known. What will you do with what you've heard? 